In today's episode, John shares his thoughts on the Pro Bowl activities at ESPN's Wide World of Sports. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. You are listening to the Main Street Magic Podcast with your hosts, Jeremy Stein and John Marone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Street Magic. I am your host, Jeremy Stein, and today I'm going to hand it over to my buddy and co-host, John Marone, so he can share his thoughts on the Pro Bowl activities at ESPN's Wide World of Sports. Jeremy, thanks for the introduction as I head on this solo episode to explain to you about the NFL Pro Bowl experience at Disney's Wide World of Sports. The NFL Pro Bowl, or their All-Star Game, takes place after the football conference championship games and the week before the Super Bowl. So there's two weeks between that, so the Pro Bowl or the All-Star Game is between that period of time. The Pro Bowl in the past has taken place at many different locations, mainly Hawaii, but they have moved it to Orlando, and by moving it to Orlando, Disney has become involved. Disney has become involved because from Wednesday through Saturday, with the game on Sunday, Wednesday through Saturday is practices and different events, and they all take place at Disney's Wide World of Sports. The actual Pro Bowl game on Sunday takes place at Camping World Stadium, which is in downtown Orlando. I had the opportunity to go check this out on Wednesday, and here's my review of it and also who this might be right for and what is available for you. So number one, the NFL asks that you download the Pro Bowl app to your phone. You are gonna need this, so that is number one. You will get to Disney's Wide World of Sports. You can take Disney transportation. You can take a minivan, which I did see. You can take an Uber. You can drive yourself. If you drive yourself, parking is free. The next step, all these things I'm about to tell you are free with the exception of food or if you're buying souvenirs. So it does not take a ticket or a cost to get in here to be able to do this. So after you get there, you're going to go through a security checkpoint. No different as if you're going into one of the parks. You would then encounter an individual who will put a wristband on you. There are different color wristbands depending upon how or who you are. So the day that I went, they were putting red wristbands on if you were friend and family. And if you are a friend and family, if you go and watch the team's practice, you had bleachers to sit on with a cover, so you were shaded from the elements and the sun. If you have a blue wristband, you are just there as a fan. You still have bleachers to sit on during the practice, but they were not covered. You can stand up against the fence in some areas as well. So the Pro Bowl is divided into two conferences the AFC and the NFC. They both practice at the same time on fields next to each other. So you're not going to be able to see both at the same time, but if your favorite team is in one of those conferences, odds are you're probably going to go watch that one. I did go back and forth between the two. I'm a Bears fan, and I can't really say that we put many players into the Pro Bowl. Sorry, but hopefully we're going to be better next year. There's always next year. So practice on, can take place anywhere from about 30 to 60 minutes. I think about 60 minutes would be about right. Um, there were some other obligations for the players the day I was there. So practice for the NFC conference only ran about 40 minutes. For the AFC, ran about 45 minutes. Once practice is done, the field is swarmed with media where they will grab players, interview them, do videos, do stuff for the news, back for their local cities, anything along those lines. And then once the players are done, many of them will head to the sidelines, to the fences, to sign autographs, take pictures, and meet the fans. Here's what I'm going to tell you about that. If you have something and you want to get it signed, get in line. The players were extremely receptive and very nice, and they did a great job. But number two, if you are not the player, there will be 
pushing and shoving, especially for the more popular players. So if you have a child who is a little smaller and they want to get an autograph or meet their favorite player, do what you can to kind of shield and protect them because there are just bigger people who are going to try and push and push and call the players' names about a hundred times and try and get them to sign whatever it is that these people are carrying around. Main thing that gets signed is a football and have yourself a good Sharpie available. Pictures work as well, but I saw posters and all kinds of different things um, for players to sign. So that is really your interaction with the players. You get to see, watch them practice. You get to hopefully have an interaction with them via an autograph or a selfie or some kind of photo. Once you're done with that, what else is there to do there? So the NFL and Disney has put together a place and where you can participate as if you were a football player and do some different drills and activities that players do. So this is what's deemed the NFL experience. On your phone, on the NFL Pro Bowl app, you will want that because every station you go to, you will scan a code where you will earn a badge, and then depending upon the number of badges you earn, you can turn that in for prizes or drawings or different things at the, uh, at the end of the day. The app will also tell you the hours, what times pl- the teams are practicing, any other events that are going on, but the hours of the wide world of sports for this are really anywhere from a, it's open anywhere from about 10 o'clock to 6 or 10 to 8, depending upon the day. And this goes on realistically for Wednesday through Saturday. Um, and then, as I said before, the game on Sunday. So what are the things that you can do here? And I'm also going to key you in for who this is right for. So number one, if you'd like to bring a child... Um, The age is perfect if your child is athletic and they're interested in football and activities and doing things. I think about seven is a decent age that they would be somewhat interested. I think this is definitely geared towards 10 to 16 or 10 to 18. Not that the adults aren't having a good time, but you start getting to that teenage years, maybe they're playing football, um, they want to be athletic or that this is definitely going to be more geared to them for what to do. So each activity has a line, hop in the line, depending how big it is, is how long you're going to wait. It's nothing that people were being rushed through with a cattle call. So And lines weren't bad. I think the longest line was probably a, uh, a passing drill. And I'd say the line, if you got in it, was maybe a 15-minute wait. Many of them you waited under five minutes um, the day I was there. So what can you do? There is a long snap challenge where you pretend you're the center and you are snapping the ball behind you, and there is a wall with holes cut out on it, and the object is to get the ball through the hole. There is a runner route where you are a wide receiver. There are three different routes you can run, and there is a strip on the grass that you're running that lights up. You follow that light. A person throws you the ball. You catch it. Hey, you just caught a touchdown and won the Super Bowl. The Pro Bowl trophy is there, and that's really one of the first things you encounter. You can get your picture taken with it. The trophy is nice. It's also engraved with the MVP, most valuable player of all the Pro Bowl games. I think the earliest one I saw in there was Otto Graham from 1951. Um, The year I was born, I looked at it, saw the players' names, and did not recognize either of those names. So, obviously, it wasn't a great year for football. Um, I tend to be somewhat of a sports fanatic, and I tend to know names, but I did not recognize either of these names. Um, When they, They will take the picture for you, and then they will send it to that app so that you have it, and then you can do whatever you want with the picture. There's the 40-yard dash, where you will be timed for running 40 yards. The best hands, there will be five stations that you will run through to catch a ball. The first one is you have to do a sideline, get your toes in at the sideline. Next is you catch the ball over your shoulder. Third, you catch one over a defender. There is a wooden cutout of a defender, and you will have to go above that defender. 
to catch the ball. The fourth station, you will try and catch it one-handed. And then the fifth station is a diving catch, of which there's a big foam mat there, and you will dive and lay out and try and catch that ball. So um, that one's kind of fun as well. There are stations there where you can play Madden football, the video game. There's a free play area. The free play area, there were kids throwing the ball, running crazy. There's cornhole set up to be able to play. Um, there's picnic tables. So a big wide open area that you can kind of have some fun with. Game face is a face painting area. There is kick tic-tac-toe of which there are two field goal posts. One's a little bigger, one's smaller, one's for the adults, one's for the kids. In between the uprights, there is tic-tac-toe, X's and O's. Um, so if you remember when you were a kid and you had the beanbag tic-tac-toe, think of this being the same thing, except it's upright, and you will kick the ball, and usually they give you about three kicks, and you will try and turn the X's to O's or vice versa. Nobody really wins. It's just can you kick it, and very few people cannot get the ball up there to kick it, so it's a good place to be able to watch. Kids and teens will have a blast in the obstacle course where they have to run through ropes. They have to run around tackling dummies. They, um, you know, it's a, you know, different drills that they have to do, and it's just a race through an obstacle course, which actually pretty fun. Precision passing, you're the quarterback, you have five throws to make, so there are five targets. Each target is a different size, it is a different height, and it is a different distance. Um, so you can have fun, some fun there. Vertical jump, you will see how high off the ground you can get. And then there is a virtual reality area. This is one I did not do, but there were three helmets, giant football helmets, you step inside of it, put on a virtual reality headset, and you're placed inside the football game. So do every one of those. Do them as many times as you want. There's no cost to do it. And if the weather's nice, you can go out there and just have a great time. Let's talk about uh, two of the other things. Number one, there are different trailers set up throughout the area, throughout the wide world of sports, where you can buy NFL Pro Bowl merchandise. You can buy hats and shirts. Shirts were thirty or forty dollars, depending what type of shirt you were getting. Hats were somewhere in the twenty dollar range. There were mugs and all kinds of different things you can buy. There was one item that I saw that tied together Disney and the Pro Bowl, and it was a big giant beach towel that said NFL Pro Bowl 2018 Orlando, and it all had the Pro Bowl trophy on it. It also had Mickey on it. And that was the only tie-in I saw in merchandise um, between Disney and the uh, Pro Bowl. You're going through all this, I'm telling you, and you say, gosh, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. There are choices. So in the area outside where there were all picnic tables, there were five food trucks available. So you can head up to the food trucks and be able to go grab something to eat and drink from there and sit outside and do that. Or you can head inside to the, um, I want to call it the ESPN Grill. I know it's not. So it's the restaurant that's in there. When Disney first opened Wide World of Sports, this was actually called All-Star Cafe. All-Star Cafe was a chain. It was started by the same individual who started Planet Hollywood. I believe his name might be Robert Earl. He is also the person who does Earl of Sandwich. So if you're looking to save some money, Earl of Sandwich at Disney Springs is a great place to go. But um, All-Star Cafe had like Shaq and Wayne Gretzky and different players. Tiger Woods, I think, has investors in it. Um, they were probably minority investors. And there was one in New York and Chicago and then um, L.A. And then Disney had one here at the Wide World of Sports. Ultimately, that kind of tanked. Um, they did change it over to the ES in the ESPN sports bar for a period of time, and now it's just like the wide world of sports grill. When you walk in, you, there's two places you can go. Number one, you could walk in and you can order from a counter, and then you can take they'll bring your food out to you, or you can wait for it and then go in the middle areas, just tables where you can go and sit and eat. If you head to the other end, there is a bar a full service bar so you can get mixed drinks you can get beers you can get draft beers and then we ordered a bunch of food from there and the 
wings. We had about four different types of wings. They were really, really good. So I, uh, I think the wings were wonderful and a nice little bar food, you know, sport bar food to be able to get. People got the burger, raved about it. Turkey sandwich, a hit. There are salads on the menu. I can tell you the people I was with, nobody got a salad, so I can't tell you what that was like. I said I'm going to go for the hot dog. The hot dog is enormous. It's actually cut in half to fit into the basket. It's more of a sausage than a hot dog. It was supposed to have caramelized onions on it. It had onions on it that just looked like they had been cooked for a little bit. There was no browning or anything to them. And there was more like just one giant strip of onion on each one. You can pass on the hot dog, go for the wings or the hamburgers if you want some sports bar food. There are also other kiosks around where you can get drinks, you can get ice cream, and you can get some other food. So send your wife to the spa. You and your children want to go have a fun time. Don't hesitate to head into Wide World of Sports and take advantage of all the free items that are there. It's a nice way to spend the day, or if you're between parks and you want to go check it out, hey, go right ahead. So you got to be at Disney now this week because it's going on right now to be able to do this. But if the Pro Bowl comes back again next year, I think this is something that you should consider checking out if you're a football fan or somebody in your family is. So, Jeremy, I will toss it back to you to close up shop. Everybody, don't hesitate to leave us a rating on iTunes We really, really, really would appreciate it. And it's something that we'll look at you and say, hey, be a pro bowler. Leave us a review. So, guys, thank you so much, and we will talk to you soon.